That's, yeah, that's me, excellent. Thank you, so uh, indeed I'm going to talk about the speeds to K. Okay, excellent, no problem, thank you. Okay, and before I get started, I would like to introduce what a multiparty computation is, because this is the first talk on the multiparty computation is session. So very quickly, imagine a setting where you have four parties, Alice, Bob, Charlie, and Dave, <clears throat> and each one of them has a secret, x1 up to x4. So one way, and they want to compute a function on this, on this input. So one way to do this is everyone sends their input to a trusted party who promises not to reveal anything else but the actual output of this function, z. So what we want in multiparty computation is to achieve like the same sort of security but involving only uh, communication between the parties. And there are several ways to achieve this. It all depends on how you model the circuit and what is the security model that you want to achieve. So for example, if you model the circuit as a circuit over F2, so as a binary circuit, then you can have different approaches like garbled circuits or VMR, which is a generalization for a, a multiple number of parties, GNW, and so on. Now, if you want to model the circuit over a finite field uh, of any characteristic, you can have VGW, you can have a protocol like Bedosa or Speeds or Mascot that work in the dishonest majority setting, or you can also have a, another sort of protocols that work in the honest majority setting based on Shamir's secret sharing. However, all these protocols work in the setting of fields because fields have very nice properties. They are very uh, nice when it comes to invertible elements, when it comes to uh, properties about random elements. And few works actually address the case uh, of computation over a ring like C to K, the integers model of 2 to the K, uh, with active security. Why do we think this is an important case of a study? Well, uh, the first, from the practical point of view, it's very natural because it's closer to what standard CPUs that do. So it's, it's very n natural to think that if you do computation modulo 2 to the, for example, 64 or 32, you're going to get an efficiency improvement because you don't need to reduce modulo P, for example, 2 to the 64 plus 13, which is a prime. Uh, you don't need to do this every time uh, that you're running your computation. Also, it allows you, if you already have a program written in C or in C++, for example, that uh, allows you to do some computation on data types that are a uh, model of 2 to the 32 or 2 to the 64, it should be easier to compile this type of program into a circuit if the, if the modulus is exactly the same. And finally, there are some functions that are very natural to implement uh, at the, a model of 2 to the some power, like bit decomposition, bit comparison, and so on. There are functions that work at the level of bits. So if you have a protocol that works in this setting, it would be very natural to shift these uh, functions to a secure implementation. Also from the theoretical point of view, it's a very interesting problem to study. So there is a gap in the theory of MPC. We know that we can compute absolutely everything because we have like uh, every circuit, if it's uh, over a field, it's complete. But if you are trying to emulate like a circuit modulo 2 to the K using a circuit modulo prime, you will always have this overhead of taking modulo all the time. So what we'd like to avoid is that we'd like to show is, is a protocol that achieves this without this overhead. And of course, just for fun, it's like an interesting problem to take a look at. These rings are very strange compared to the fields, so it's like a lot of interesting properties arises from this work. Now there are some works in this direction. So we're not the first in taking a look at this. So a uh, Kramer et al. in Eurocrypt 2003, they show a feasibility result that this is possible in the setting of openness majority. They, they develop a protocol using only black box operations of the ring, so only addition and multiplication. We have also Bogdanov et al. in SRX 2008 and Aki et al. in CCS 2016, who use replicated secret sharing, which is not dependent on the, of a field structure, to get computation over this field. However, it doesn't scale too well because it precisely is replicated secret sharing, and it only ha accepts one corruption. Finally, there is a, a work that will be presented after mine, uh, which is a, a compiler that takes a passively secure protocol that works over any ring and compiles it in an active one. So that is, suits perfectly in this setting. The problem is that the number of corruptions gets uh, lowered down by like a square root, sort of. So it's not like a very complete result in that sense. Okay. So why is it so difficult to develop a protocol in this setting? Well, many practical solutions uh, of this honest majority MPC require the use of message authentication codes to make sure that everything is correct. And these things work very nicely over fields, but when you take them to this uh, ring setting, you have a lot of issues because you have like zero divisors, so numbers that multiply together gives you zero even though each number is non-zero. You have non-invertible elements, which is a very annoying issue, and you also have this interesting property, which is that taking the dot product is not a two-universal hash function, which is something that is very standard over fields and we use all the time. 
So uh, it's been an open problem due to these uh, kind of issues of working over this ring to develop an efficient homomorphic authentication scheme uh, that is homomorphic over this setting. What do we achieve in this work? Well, it's precisely this question I just named. So uh, we develop a new additively homomorphic authentication scheme uh, over this ring. Uh, the solution is actually very simple when it comes to number theoretic tricks. So we use very elementary number theory, and also it's quite efficient, which is a, like a good feature. And we also perform a fine grain analysis of the batch MAC checking, as I'm going to show later on, on the slides. We also show how to generate triples. Uh, our computation will be in the preprocessing model, so we will need triples for, uh, to handle the multiplication gates. We show how to generate those, and it's roughly twice, it involves roughly twice the communication of mascot, if you're familiar with the mascot protocol for this honest majority. And with these two tools and also another, like, l l small tools that we need to use, we can develop a protocol for this honest majority MPC over this ring. Our protocol is quite efficient. It, in, it involves asymptotically the same operations that the parties will do if they are computing the circuit on the clear. So that's a nice feature. And it's also, uh, it's also expected to be quite efficient because we are doing our computations, uh, computations modulo 2 to the 32 or 2 to the 64, just to cite an example. OK, so that's uh, roughly the introduction of what we achieved. I'm going to show how we did it. But uh, before that, I need to start with speeds, which is the protocol where we base our protocol on top of. So this protocol is a protocol for dishonest majority, uh, and it works over fields. And basically, it goes as follows. So the key ingredient of the SPITS protocol is something that we call uh, the secret sharing. So to secret share a value x, where x is an element of a field, what we do is that each party will have a share xi, such that the sum of these xi's gives you x. So this is an additive sharing of x. Uh, so if the, no more than n minus 1 parties get together, they won't learn anything about x unless they actually have all the shares. But on top of this, we also have an, uh, an authentication mechanism by means of this key, alpha. So we have alpha, which is a random global key, and they have also additive shares of this random global key. And finally, they have also additive shares of the tag of x. The tag is alpha times x. This will allow the parties to make sure that when something is open, uh, this value is indeed correct. Something important about this uh, scheme is that it's linear in the sense that if you have secret share of x, you have secret share of y, and you want to compute secret shares of x plus y, it's just a matter of adding things locally, except the MAC key, because the MAC key is global. But you add the, the shares of the tag and the shares of the value, and that will give you a shares of the sum. The same with multiplication by constant, and the same with uh, addition by constant. You can do these operations locally, which is a really nice feature of the, of the secret sharing scheme. Now, once you have this tool, getting a computation in the preprocessing model is not so hard. So the input phase, you need to preprocess some values. So for the input phase, you use random values ri, such that party i knows the value ri, and ri is secret shared. And you open the value, so party i will open the value xi minus ri, which is OK because ri is random, so it, imp so it masks the input xi. And then they do this uh, local operation because of the properties of the secret sharing scheme to get shares of xi. So that secret shares the inputs of each party. Then you run through the circuit, computing gate by gate. Addition gates are for free because the scheme is linear. And multiplication gates are handled by, mean, by means of this nice trick, the Weaver triple t uh, trick, which is if you open x minus, if you have a triple which is preprocessed and with secret shared a, b, c, where c is equal to n times d, you can just open x minus a, open y minus b. This doesn't reveal anything about x and about y. And then you can, you, you can perform this affine operation uh, for free using the properties of the linear scheme, of the linear secret sharing scheme. Finally, you need to open things. You, as I said here, you have to open xi minus ri, you need to open x minus i, and, and at the end you want to open the output also because you want to get the output of the computation. So what you do is that essentially each party announces their share, this is x1, this is x2, this is x3, this is x4, and then they just take the sum and that's x, because that's how x was constructed by uh, starting from the shares. Now, the problem is that Alice can just choose to lie about the, about, about the share. You can say, my share is not x1, but x1 plus 1. So that additive error is going to be reflected at, in the output at the very end. And we don't want that. So f to avoid this kind of attacks, we actually show, uh, we actually use the tags that uh, were done directly, that were used uh, at the beginning. So party 1 is going to compute z1 equal to the share of the tag minus the share of the MAC key times the value that was opened. The same with Z2, the same with Z3, the, the same with Z4. And they're going to announce these values. OK, I, I didn't uh, mention this in the X. They'll commit before opening so that we know that all the shares are uh, unrelated. And then once they open these values, they check that the addition gives you 0. 
This should be the case because if you think about it, the, the sum of the MIs is alpha times x by construction, and the sums of the alphas gives you alpha. This is the same x in all the operations, so it should be alpha times x minus alpha times x, and that should give you zero. Now, what happens if the adversary actually tries to cheat? We can show the following. So if an adversary tries to open an x prime that is not x, so x plus delta introduces an error, and also tries to lie about these uh, commitments uh, about the max z, then we can show that the adversary knows uh, big delta and small delta such that delta times alpha gives you, equal, it gives you big delta. This can be seen as a, as a forgery to the actually ma underlying max scheme. And then you can solve for alpha, you can take the inverse of delta, and this gives you that alpha, uh, alpha is equal to delta inverse times big delta. So the adversary knows alpha, because the adversary knows everything on the right side. And since alpha was chosen uh, uniformly at random, the probability of this happening is one divided by the size of the field. And if the field is large enough, then we can show that this is negligible, which is essentially the security argument, the speeds, and mascot, and other protocols of similar nature. I want you to notice that this doesn't translate directly on the setting of modulo 2 to the k, of integers modulo 2 to the k, simply because we cannot take the inverse of delta, because delta may not be invertible. In fact, we, can, we cannot argue that this equation is satisfied with low probability, because it can be satisfied with high probability if a small delta, for example, is 2 to the k minus 1. What is the probability that something times 2 to the k minus 1 gives you 0, if big delta is 0? That something, that alpha only needs to be even. So it's one half probability of this equation being satisfied. So the adversary can cheat with high probability. So what do we do in speeds to k to overcome this issue? This sentence hopefully uh, summarizes it all. So the computation is going to be done in a larger ring, in z2 to the k plus s. For specific parameters, think of, think of k as 64 and s as another 64. So we're going to do the computation modulo 2 to the 128. However, the correctness is not going to be, to be guaranteed on this modulus. It's going to be guaranteed in a smaller modulus, say, modulo 2 to the 64. So that's uh, the whole approach that we take. Uh, more precisely, so to share a value that is uh, in c2 to the k, what we do is that we have, just like before, additive shares, but additive shares not of x, but of x prime. So we had additive shares of a value x prime. These shares are modulo 2 to the k plus s, but we actually care only about the lower k bits. So we know that x prime is going to be congruent to x modulo 2 to the k, not 2 to the k plus s. Other than that, it's essentially the same. So we have shares of the max key alpha. Uh, notice that alpha is in 2 to the s, not to the k plus s. We, as we will show in a minute, this is enough for the purposes. And also we have shares of the tag, just like before. So essentially everything is the same, but uh, we are just considering the size of the shared value as, v, as being smaller, as being 2 to the k, not 2 to the k plus s. Why is that this, uh, sorry, this is the intuition about what is going on. So we have shares of x prime. This is x1, x2, up to xn. But we only care about the lower k bits, or only care in the final output. But the whole computation is done modulo to the k plus s. So why is this actually, why is that this actually help? So let's uh, perform the analysis that we did before in the field case, but now in the ring case. So suppose that there is an error. So the adversary opens an x prime that is not x, but it's x, x plus delta. So for it to be considered there an error, for it to be wrong, delta has to be non-zero, but not only non-zero. It has to be non-zero modulo 2 to the k. Because if it's zero modulo 2 to the k, then maybe the adversary cheated in the upper s bits. But we don't care if the adversary cheats there. We only care if the adversary cheats in the lower k bits. So this error is non-zero modulo 2 to the k. Now, if the check passes, this equation is satisfied, just like before. Now, I'm going to try to convince you that if with these two conditions, actually the probability that this equation is satisfied is low, which is what we didn't have before. Because before, delta was large. Delta was a, sorry, delta was non-zero modulo k plus s. But here is non-zero modulo k, 2 to the k, which is a, an additional property we have. So how does the analysis go? So we have alpha times delta equal to big delta, modulo 2 to the k plus s. What we know about these guys is that alpha is not all of it is random, but the first s bits are random. I'm taking k to be equal to s here for simplicity. So we know this is the blue region. And we, what we also know about small delta is that small delta has some zeros on the less significant bits, but it ha doesn't have so many zeros. It has to face, it has to encounter a one at some point below this uh, line here, because it's non-zero modulo 2 to the k. Otherwise, it will be zero modulo 2 to the k. So this red region has the property that the less significant bit is one. And it's easy to see that big delta also has exactly the same shape. 
Then what we can do with this equation is just shift it down, divided by 2 to the v, where v is the number of zeros that we had in this lower region. So when you shift it down, everything goes down. The left side goes down, the right side goes down, and also the modulus goes down by v bits. And the cool thing about this equation is now that delta divided by 2 to the v is invertible because the less significant bit is 1. So it's, it's an odd number, and odd numbers are invertible modulo any power of 2. So we can now take the inverse of it, just like we did in the field case. So this is what we do. We take the inverse of it, modulo 2 to the k plus s minus b. And you can see that alpha is equal to something that the adversary knows. This is known by the adversary. So it means that the adversary has guessed alpha. And since if we take s to be large enough, this only happens with probability 2 to the minus s, which is negligible. So this is uh, really the argument that we take in, in, in our approach. So I'm just going to write it very formally here, or at least a little bit more formally. So you take and divide the equation by 2 to the v, where v is the largest integer that divides a small delta. Now delta divided by 2 to the v is invertible. You can send it to the other side, and then alpha was guessed. Essentially, that's, that's uh, the argument in our work. And this trick, we apply it over and over again to achieve uh, all the security checks to make, it, to make them work. So we have, uh, this is the overview of the protocol once we have this trick. So we have two phases, an offline phase and an online phase. In the offline phase, you have to pre-process some data. You have to generate some random authenticated values in order to be able to share the input, as I showed initially with speeds. You also need to pre-process some multiplication triples, which are necessary for the multiplication gates. And you also need to generate shares of the MAC key alpha. And also, you need to uh, in implement some functionality that allows you to authenticate values as you need them. And for the only phase, you need to actually make use of this preprocessing. You need to distribute the input using the values that were constructed in the step one of offline phase. You need to compute shares of the values of the circuit, uh, going gate by gate. Again, addition gates are for free. Multiplication gates require the multiplication triples. And finally, when you check correctness of the, you need to check correctness of every open value that uh, you partially reconstructed uh, on the circuit. You can do this by checking every individual MAC or, or by performing a batch MAC checking, which I will show in a minute. So this is the overview of the protocol. But uh, from this point of the attack, I'm, I'm just going to focus on two main parts of it. Uh, I'm going to focus on the multiplication triples, and I'm going to focus on the batch MAC checking. Uh, and I'm going to begin right now with the batch MAC checking. So what is the batch MAC checking? Uh, as I said, you have to open many, many values. For the inputs, you have to open values. For the multiplication gate, you have to open values. Also for the output itself, you have to open values. And each time to open, it involves some interaction. It involves uh, some some communication that uh, it, at some point that if you do this every time, it's going to be not so, ex so efficient to do it. Moreover, there is something that I haven't mentioned, which is uh, every time that you open a value, that you check correctness, you have to mask the top uh, S bits just to be able to uh, realize the functionality that we have in mind. So this mask involves some authenticated random value, and this also takes some communication. So we want to avoid checking each value each time that it's opened. This is a standard technique uh, when you have to check uh, values in NPC. The typical solution of our fields to avoid checking every single value is just you have t values to check, x1 up to xt. You don't know if they are correct. Then you apply the principle of the deferred result, and you say, OK, then if there is at least one of them that is not correct, I just take a linear combination of them. And with high probability, this linear combination is not going to be correct either. So I can just check this linear combination instead of checking each one of them. So this is what you do over fields. And the argument over fields is, is very straightforward. You say, OK, if one of them, so delta i's are the errors of each xi. And the errors also get aggregated using the same linear combination as delta equal to uh, the, the combination of the delta i's. Now, first argument is delta is non-zero with high probability. And this is very straightforward to prove over fields. It's a, it's a very simple argument, just involving a, the, it just involves the fact that taking the dot product is a two universal hash function. And the second argument is if delta is non-zero, then the check passes with low probability. But that, this we already showed before. So this argument is very straightforward over fields. What do we want to do in speed to k is essentially do the same. But the problem is that the analysis gets trickier. Because now in this setting, we cannot just simply argue that taking that product is a universal hash function, because it's not. So we have to apply like a different set of tricks to, to achieve this. Basically, there are two ways of doing this in our setting. So let E be the event in which the check passes. So this equation is satisfied. So one way to do it, just like we added another register of S bits to, to our numbers to ensure security, we can add another S bits. And this will allow us to, to, to prove uh, that the function is a two universal hash function, sort of. And this should be fine enough for our purposes. And you can do this, indeed. 
But if you do this, you get a probability of 2 to the minus s half, not by adding twice the s, but by dividing s as s half plus s half. So you get a probability of 2 to the minus s half, which means that if you want an error probability of 2 to the minus 80, you need to set s to be 160, which is, something that, which is very large, because you already have also the k. So k is 64, s 160. This will give you a value that is a, that's a very large per application. So what we do instead, we do a more fine-grained analysis, and we get this probability, which is much better. So 2 to the minus s and 2 to the minus s plus log s. So you still have some loss of security bits. It's not exactly, if you set s to be 80, it's not 80 bits of security you get. You have to subtract the log of s, but still not so bad. You need to subtract 6 or 7. So you set it to be a little bit larger if you want a security of 80 bits. Okay. For the details of this analysis, I would like to refer you to the paper. But the analysis is really straightforward. You just need to apply this trick like in a more clever way. Um, finally, I would like to talk a little bit about the multiplication triples. Just going very fast uh, through them. I'm just going to skip the slide and going directly to this one. So the way that they, they are, we take the, the approach that we take for the multiplication triples is the mascot approach in which we use OT. So we have basically uh, four steps. In the first step, we run OT to get shares of C equal to A times B, to get additive shares, where uh, the bold symbols are vectors. So C is a vector, A is a vector, and B is a number. So essentially, we get many, many triples, but using the same B for all these triples. So this is one way to say it. This is the first step, and you do it, w, you do it using oblivious transfer. The second step is that you don't want vectors. You actually want numbers. So to get numbers, you collapse them down, taking a random linear combination. Uh, just one remark here is that in Maskell, you can do this just by taking numbers, and this is OK. But uh, if you use numbers, you cannot use the leftover hash lemma to actually argue uh, randomness because it doesn't hold like that in the setting of C2 to the K. Instead, you have to take A to be a vector of bits so that taking a random linear combination corresponds to taking a random subset sum, which is indeed random. So there you can actually apply the same analysis. So you collapse them down taking a linear combination, and then you authenticate them using this uh, Mac functionality I mentioned at the beginning. You need to authenticate values. And then you sacrifice. To sacrifice, you also need to apply the same trick of going over a larger ring and so on to make sure that things are correct. Sacrifice is just a step in which you take one triple to check the correctness of another triple. And then the first triple is discarded. Okay. Then I would like to conclude now. So uh, in this work, we have developed a protocol for efficient uh, multiparty computation in the discounted majority setting, modulo 2 to the any power. In fact, modulo any prime to any power. We just focus on the case of 2, but this extends to any, any prime. We introduce a number of, a set of number theoretic tricks to uh, overcome the issues of working over this ring. And we have given the first efficient uh, homomorphic authentication scheme over this setting, uh, which may be also of independent interest. Now, some future work which is important to mention. So we didn't give an implementation. So it's important to give an implementation and to actually give some performance, num performance numbers. Uh, our online phase is expected to be fast because we are doing operations in native data types like uh, 2 to the 32 or 2 to the 64. But the preprocessing is theoretically slower by mask, uh, than mascot by the simple re reason that our data types are larger. So if you want to do some computation side, you need to always add this uh, additional register. We also have developed, uh, it's important to develop soft protocols for basic primitives. If you want to use MPC in any, meaningful in, in any meaningful way, you need to have like a set of primitives for equality testing or comparison or bit decomposition or shifting and so on. There is a huge line of research in this direction, but most of it only works over fields. Because you need, for example, the simple reason that you need to divide by two, which is not something that we can do very easily over this setting. So this is another line of research uh, that is very interesting in the setting. And finally, this is all in the setting of this honest majority. So it's a very natural question whether or not this can be extended to the, set of, uh, to the setting of honest majority or T less than in thirds, where you have to use Shamir secret sharing, which doesn't extend directly to the setting of uh, rings. And with that, I would like to conclude. Thank you so much.